What's up guys? So today in this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you my favorite ways of dealing with your opponent's knee shield. When you just keep running into that shin as a barrier and you're not really sure how to get around their guard. I'm going to show you my favorite variation and stick with us to later on in the video. I'm going to send you on over to Brennan from David vs Goliath BJJ and he's going to show you his favorite ways of how to pass a knee shield as well. Let's get right into the video. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to focus on my favorite way of how to pass a knee shield. Alright, so I've got Nikita here, I'm getting him to drop down. And so, what we are going to do, we're in this position where sometimes we're moving forward, our opponent could have their knee up nice and high like that there, and I just feel like I'm running into this, uh, this shield, okay, maybe framing on the neck, he's controlling my wrist, I feel like I'm not getting any closer. Sometimes if the leg is quite shallow, I'm able to pull the leg out like that and then start to move forward. Or I could maybe use my elbow and get inside. Sometimes it's quite hard to do that, okay? If his leg's over like that, it's quite easy to start to sprawl, okay, control the gear, and then work on weaving your leg around and moving around. But what makes this really difficult is when he locks his toes or his, just his heels together in this position here. So I'm moving forward and I feel like there's a lot of pressure in this position here. So what we are going to do, I'm going to move him out of this position because I'm unable to open his legs up more than he allows me. So, I'm going to hold on to the bottom leg, I'm going to lift up my free leg, okay, make sure it's not too close where they're able to scoop underneath. Now from here, I'm going to step this knee up and shuffle to here, okay, I'm going to keep my elbow in, and now I can separate the legs where I can start to go for my knee slide pass. But, instead of going for that pass, what we are going to do is we're going to keep this position, keep his legs locked, and I'm going to rotate all the way to the opposite side. So, we're here. I'm looking for the hip bone, I'm holding underneath the knee, I'm going to step this leg up, and I'm going to shuffle and get to this position here. So he's really only got that. I'm going to be really cruel and drop my leg over the top of the outside of his knee, and then that's quite easy to get that one free. I've got a lot of different optional passes here, so I could hold on to the lapel, I could lift up, and I could just work on my very basic bow and arrow pass here, where maybe I strike under, get my underhook here, wrap over that arm, start to move backwards, and look for my side control, okay? I've got other options as well. So once I get over to that side, so I move over, I drop down here like this, okay? I could also work on just getting an underhook as well. So strike the elbow, hook underneath, whether I'm lifting up that arm or going for a cross face, it's not going to be hard to drop down, work his legs away, and get a good side control. Another option of something I could do is once I'm in that position, so all the way over, aggressively dropping down, if I feel like I'm running into all these barriers, or I feel like I might run into his forearm or his shin, I'm just gonna back step and look for my side control. Okay, his legs are pointing this way, so I may as well go the other way. Whether I'm holding onto his gi, or maybe I get a cross face here, it's not hard to work your way over and get a good side control here. Whether you're getting your underhook, or you're just keeping that hand down on the mat. So I'll change the angle. So, he's reinforcing that grip, locking, and I keep running into all these barriers here like that there. I'm not able to move his legs out of this position, so I'll keep them locked and I'll just move him. Step the leg up, shuffle over, and drop down. That leg is very easy to get out. Grab onto the little pedal, lift up the sleeve, or if you're able to, I always want to look at holding my opponent's limbs. So lifting up the elbow, drop down, work backwards, then I've got a good side control. Okay, otherwise a back step variation. We're here in this position, moving forward, over, drop. Okay, I'm gonna run into all these barriers. So instead of that, I have gotta get a handle so he doesn't roll a turtle. I can hold onto the gi. But ideally, I'd love to go here, work my way around, the side control, where I can get my underhook, and I've got a good pass. So those are my favorite ways of how to pass a knee shield. Uh, thanks, Professor Gavin, for having me on today. On uh, my section here, I just want to show one of my favorite ways to pass a knee shield, so here we go. All right, guys, so when I get stuck in the knee shield, um, usually what I'm looking for is to force the bottom person back to going flat. Okay, so if you guys notice, tips on his side right now, that knee shield is able to stay in nice and tight here. Uh, but as I start to get Tim's back flat on the mat, okay, his hips 
also face up and then this knee shield starts to go away. Okay, so just kind of positionally, if he's able to stay on his side, that's when this knee shield starts to give me problems where I can't pass. Okay, so one of the ways I like to get him uh, back to a flat position is I like to hold the collar here. Okay, and what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to anchor myself in, right? I'm able to uh, kind of arch my body uh, almost like you're surfing, like I'm going uh, belly up, okay? And I'm gonna put pressure with my hips and my chest on this knee shield. Okay, with my uh, bottom hand, my left arm in this case, I look to control uh, the sleeve if I can. Okay, so when I get up into this position, again, I'm gonna look to put pressure on Tim. So I step up with my outside foot, and I'll change angles in a second, but right now I'm gonna take my right knee off the ground also. Okay, so I got my right toes on the ground, but not my right knee. Okay, this is gonna allow me to kind of push, pull, and keep a lot of pressure on Tim. Okay, so the bottom person usually doesn't want the knee to come too far across the body, because then you get smashed past. And usually you don't want the knee to come too far out because then I can walk and get my underhook here. Okay, so the bottom person's job is to keep this knee uh, on your center line. Okay, so again, I grab my collar, I grab the sleeve, I step up, and I'm pushing off my toes and I'm taking my right knee in this situation off the mat. Okay, Tim, how does that feel? Uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, a little uncomfortable, okay? So right here, guys, I'm not really expending any energy, but you guys can see I'm starting to push, pull. And so all I'm looking to do is I'm looking to apply pressure to Tim, keep him uncomfortable, and I can slowly start to walk my feet, walk my feet, okay, force Tim flat. And as you guys can see, his knee is starting to face up. Okay, and I just hop that knee shield here. Yeah, I can look for my underhook, cross face, all right? And I'm in a half bar now, but that's okay. I'm past the knee shield. Now all I have to do with this good grip on his head and arm right now, Hey, get up, knee slice through and look to pass the half. All right guys, so switching angles again. Tim has his knee shield in. Okay, his bottom leg usually looks to go over my uh, right leg here in this case. Again, keeping me stuck. Okay, so again, I like to reach for the collar. This is gonna help me pull myself in, flare my chest and apply some pressure. Okay, if I don't control the sleeve right here, as I set the pressure, Tim's gonna be able to scoop my leg. He can go to X guard. Uh, different types of guards from there. So that's why I want to control the sleeve. Okay, one, so you can't attack the leg that I pose. And two, all right, so I can keep pulling the sleeve up, forcing him flat. Okay, so two purposes on the sleeve grip. This is really important. Okay, so I get my collar on my sleeve right here. Again, notice how my right knee right now is on the mat. Okay, if I apply pressure here, Tim, how does that feel? Uncomfortable. A little uncomfortable, but now as I take my knee off the mat, guys, oh, as I drive, okay, uh, it's a lot heavier for him now. Okay, so from this position, I wait. I'm not in a rush to pass. Okay, a lot of times if the guy has a really good guard here, he's gonna look to keep that knee shield in and it's gonna be a little bit of a fight. Okay, but I'm making him bear all my weight. And again, I can push, pull, start driving into him a little bit. Okay, and then I can start to walk. Okay, walk, 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 get his hips facing up. Pop that knee shield. Look for my underhook to my cross face. And then again, look to pass the half guard. All right guys, so Tim had a great question actually. If I'm in this position, can the bottom person start to fight for an underhook and come up? Okay, so the reason why I'm not too worried about that is because when I have control of this collar here, I'm starting to apply pressure. It's a little hard for him to sneak in a deep underhook. All right, and secondly, all right, usually guys off the bottom, uh, when they wanna play an underhook game, they're looking to come up to dog fight or a half guard. In that case, he's gonna have to remove his knee shield on his own. Okay, so a lot of times Tim will tap his own knee, and he'll follow his knee up to an underhook, okay, and then he's gonna look to come out here, but again, we're talking about passing the knee shield, uh, not the half guard. So if, if that were to happen, and I could take my knee out, <clears throat> instead of passing in this direction with the knee slice, all right, I'll take my right knee over the hip line, keep him flat, all right, and start to look for a mount. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's one of my favorite ways to pass the half guard against guys who have a really good knee shield game. And uh, thanks for having me. I'll pass it back over to Professor Gavin. So there you have it, guys. A couple of different ways of how to pass your opponent's knee shield. Hopefully this video was helpful. I'm gonna leave the links in the description below to Brandon's page. So make sure you head on over, like, comment, subscribe, and share. That's gonna be muchly appreciated. It'll definitely help us with making future videos. And until next time, 